a down, down, down. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your first finalist from Canada, Chris Bumstead. All right, guys, so we switch back to alphabetical order with one of the favorites. Everybody's been waiting to see what con condition he's going to bring to this year's classic physique. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Nice quadriceps right out of the gate. Tiny waist. There was something so pleasant about the place. Chris, to me, is everything that classic bodybuilding is supposed to be. It's a blend of muscularity, shape, refinement, an artistic, you know, blend of muscle bellies. Not to mention, it looks like he knows how to show it off. And that's a key element when you talk about classic physique is the performance. This is what was lost in men's open bodybuilding. And the classic physique guys are bringing it back. I see the Bob Paris pose. I see some of the Labrata style poses. These guys are bringing back the old school posing and it looks good on them. And you know what sealed the deal on that Labrata style pose was the mustache. Yeah, there you go. Lee was one of the few bodybuilders along with Samir Banu and Mike Mincer, Ray Mincer, to get away with a mustache in uh, open bodybuilding. And I think it suits him to be honest with you. <laughs> Well, he's been second twice to Breon, knocking on first door. Yeah, and you said he's about six feet tall? Six one. Six one, yeah. Very tall for this class. I think this is a better package in a better condition this year than uh, slightly than last year. I think it's a better package. But I feel that Chris is still struggling a little bit in that back area as far as that thickness and muscularity. Good eye. Well, guys, exactly didn't, right. didn't he have some adversity last year, some health issues that kept him from being at his peak? Yeah, I think he, he has some form of immune system uh, uh, disease, which I feel impacts his ability to really uh, push really hard on those final stages of contest prep. Yeah, a lot, a lot goes in in the final stages, and you got to fell out. If you're handicapped, it's just, it, it can wreak havoc on you. But the nice waist, right? The shoulder to the waist differential really sets this physique off. Well, that side, oh, look at how tiny that is. That side shot that just showed with the vacuum, the tiny waist, and those striated glutes was really impressive. If you're an artist. Defending Olympia champion from the USA, Breon. Ensley. So is this gentleman going to make it a three-time title? We will wait and see. But Brion is being consistent with his condition. His condition is definitely his signature. It definitely feels a bit of a hybrid uh, classic bodybuilder uh, in the sense that his physique is different. It's, you know, the shape, the structure. His insertions, his muscle bellies, very strong, thick throughout his hamstrings and glutes, conditioned from top to toe. Yeah, he uh, posted a lot of pictures leading up to this to give us a preview of what was coming. Looks, looks a little bit more flatter than the pictures that he was showing online. Spent some time in Arizona training with the legend Chris Cormier, who's transferred over into training uh, athletes. He works closely with Breon. Breon looks like he has just a little smidgen of too much oil on here tonight. But he is a performer. He knows he comes from the cloth of Chris Cormier and a flex wheeler and the, the legendary poses before him. He's taking his time with these movements. Started out as a bodybuilder. He wanted to be a bodybuilder and jumped into competition and literally saw the welcoming of the classic physique. Didn't win his first time out. Danny Hester won the first one, and then Breon, here he is. Going Guys, for number three. Look at that bicep jumping <laughs> from that angle. <laughs> it's sick. But you have to see athletes like this, this in the flesh, because it's only when you see them in the flesh you realize how superior they are as athletes. Right. The insertions, the detail, the bicep. muscle bellies, it's just incredible. Wow. Yeah. And look at those bicep peaks. Yeah. And it, again, that's something we haven't seen from the other competitors, the biceps, but those legs are world-class as well. And he's showing his physique off to its fullest. We know now why he's got two of those titles at home. I think it's gonna be very difficult to take this title away from this gentleman. I think the nearest person to possibly challenging him, for me possibly, is gonna be George, because of the level condition of George and his thickness, but it's gonna be very difficult. 
you know, to see uh, his music is kind of mixed and he's flexible too. Wow. Take page out of Arash by doing those splits. Beautiful routine. Give it up for your two-time Olympia champion. All right, our classic Kingsley. physique guys. But George is standing out very much like Keon a bodybuilder there. Yes, absolutely. Embryon switch. Wow. You can see just how big George is in this Jane lineup. Chris he looks switch. like a 212 competitor. And this is one of the beauties of the height and weight requirements because you do get to see different body Gentlemen, shapes. Front, yeah, he step. fits into that category. That's such a great shape Side of structure, chest. but that's going to look so much better in the 212. Yeah, fill him out, grow into the physique. Back double bicep. Here's a telltale right here. This could be the difference between second and third, or we could see another shift. Yeah, and you got to remember, again, it's not a bodybuilding contest. It is a classic physique contest. The criteria is different. Dominals and thighs. We can be more critical when we're looking at bodybuilders in terms of the graininess and the separation, the vascularity. Here we're looking at tie-ins. Uh, we're looking at harmony and symmetry and flow. This is a physique contest, not a bodybuilding contest. They can get away with being a little softer in areas that a bodybuilder can't. Thank you, gentlemen. Relax. Back to you, Bob. And dare I right, use the word you, beauty, Steve. but we're looking for... Take the second place award, the check for $10,000, the Olympia silver medal, to our runner-up this evening. Breon Ansley. Oh, wow. my goodness. We have a new Did, champion. And I can hear the crowd roaring from here. I was wrong on my prize award amounts, but I was right on the difference. $30,000 for top, and second place was 10. Third place was five. Well, let me tell you something. Breon never saw this coming because he has carried that title for two years around his neck like a true champion and a reflection of a champion. But what do champions do when they get knocked down? They come back hard. Absolutely. It's going to make things a whole lot more interesting a year and from now. Presenting the first place award is CEO Greg Conley from Trifecta. IFBB Pro League President, Mr. Jim Mannion. They will take the first place award, the check for $30,000, the Olympia gold medal, and the title of 2019 Classic Olympia champion, Chris Bumstead. And there, there it is. There's been quite a rumble uh, amongst the fans who it would be. Well, let me tell you, the uh, social media is going to be on fire tonight. Whenever a defending champion gets taken out, everyone comes with their opinions, and we equally look forward to seeing what the fans have to say about an upset. You can see the agony and the ecstasy here. Bumstead on the brink of tears, and, well, Breon passing the torch. Well, Breon should be All proud. Right, guys, let's get some pictures, please. Your favorite classic pose. Brian should be proud of what he's represented in the industry over the last two years. He did set a standard. Well, he's not done by a long shot, so uh, a subjective sport of opinion in, in, in these poses, right, thank you guys. they both could have, have represented that title very well. Place. And now we're going to get thank a new gentlemen. flavor from Chris Bumstead representing Canada. When's the I, last time I, we had a Canadian Olympian? I'm not so sure. i got to go to the archives to, to remember. Maybe these guys listening out there will hit us up on Instagram or on Facebook or somewhere and let us know the last Canadian Olympia champion. Is Whitney Jones Canadian? No, I know she's from Arizona. Okay, she's from Chandler, Arizona. Yeah, that's right. I know Chris is going to be a great representative for this uh, classic division. He travels the world All a right, lot with his sponsors. Gentlemen. We're going to have the champ stay right there in the center. See, I'm a hist history buff. I'm real curious now. Who was the last Olympia from Canada? It, All right, there was none. We got our first. Classic Olympia champion, Chris Bumstead. Here. Uh, we'll see. I love my kid. I love my Canadians. <laughs> Canada, we brought it home. Proud. 
Give it up for the champ, Chris Bumstead, your classic Olympia champion. Uh, speaking, uh, using machine, machine, machine.